Hello, everybody. Hello. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's, that was okay. Usually, when I say hello to a class in Japanese, I say hello, hello, everybody. I just go konnichiwa, whatever. And I'm like, oh, I was like, hey, come on, say that louder. Okay, konnichiwa. So this is actually very good. Thank you. <laughs> um, as um, as Dr. Clanky was just saying, I flew in from Tokyo today, and boy, are my arms tired. <laughs> That's one of the oldest jokes in the world, I love it. <laughs> I um, came in from 17 degree weather and sunny in Tokyo to this. Um, <laughs> snowing, dark, and cold. So, but, uh, and I also forgot to pack my razor and toiletries last night, so they're still in Tokyo. I had to drive from the airport home, shower, shave, Put on new clothes and then come here within the space of two hours. Chitose, home, here. So it's been a very interesting day and um, I think it will be even more interesting as this talk goes on. I will welcome your questions and comments, but um, if you have a question about something you don't understand, clarification, etc., then please ask me quickly um, when you're in the middle of my talk. But the bigger questions that require a long answer, Please hold the questions till the end. I will try to give room for question and answer at the end. Okay? Clear? All right. Get it. Let's talk about today's topic. Japanese only. Racial discrimination in Japan. That's my name. Don't wear it out. Associate Professor, Hokkaido Information University. That's where I've been working for a while. And um, I was talking with a whole... With a, I was talking with Sensei over there a little while back. He asked what my name is in kanji. I wrote it on the board for him. Yes. I, my, name has, my, my name is funny because it's a Japanese name. It's a new type of Japanese name. It's a naturalized citizen's Japanese name. I took out Japanese citizenship. I'm a Japanese. Uh -huh. Ten years ago. The Otara Onsen's case also happened ten years ago. I promise there's no connection. I'll tell you more about it later. But... Um, what are we talking about? We're talking about Japanese-only signs that were up. Um, Dr. Clanky, this is going off. This is um, on the it's computer. Okay. It's on, I think it's on yeah. sleep. Hold on, effective video broadcast. It's okay. Very well. Okay. This sign, this is a photo that was taken in front of Otaru Onsen Ospa. Anybody been to Ospa? It's down by Otaru Chikko. This was January 3rd, 2000. A little more than 10, oh, just almost 11 years ago now. And yes, that sign was up saying Japanese could, only Japanese could enter. Okay, well, here we are Hokkaido, here we are Sapporo, here we are Otara. I bring, everybody knows the shape of, of Hokkaido, of course, but this map will, will matter later because I will show you where other signs were. Signs that said Japanese only were not just limited to <laughs> um, Otara. Because of Otara, I will maintain, they spread throughout the country. Yes. All right, Onsen Yunohana. How many people have been to Onsen Yunohana? Wow, a sizable number of people. And I noticed there are some non-Japanese looking people that have also been to Onsen Yunohana. That's very good news, because there was a time when you would have been refused. There is their famous place, their original branch was um, in Temiya, is in Temiya. It's Otara's largest bathing facility, established 1998. If you want to take a look at them, if you haven't been there before, there's their website, www.unohana.org. <laughs> well, they had a Japanese-only sign, too. It was right there on the front, like that. Yep, as you can see, it's in Japanese at the very top. <laughs> And it says Japanese only in English. Anybody read Russian? No Russian readers here? I can't read it. Um, Dr. Glanky, can you read it? As it says, it's in English, Japanese, and Russian. And this photo is dated September 19, 1999. Now, what happened? Why is this sign up? Let's talk, look at the history. We went to ask why. And we visited them on September 19th. 
1999. For all of you um, science fiction fans out there, it's in space 1999 when Moon Base Alpha separated from the Earth. There's somebody out there that remembers space 1999. Yeah, the exact same date. Funny, huh? Nobody else gets the reference. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we went. It wasn't just me that went. My friend Olaf Karthaus. He's a German gentleman. He's a permanent resident at the time, Ipane Jusha. His Japanese wife and his three children went there to say, what's going on? And also to take a bath. A friend of ours by the name of Morgan, an American, his Japanese wife and child also came with us to find out. How did we find out about this place? Through the internet. Somebody went there, a Brazilian woman who lives in, Japan, who lives in Sapporo, went there with her family and she was told she could not come in. She was extremely traumatized by that, so she let us know about that, because we had been working on issues of discrimination in Japan at that time. And our Ch a Chinese friend also came along with us, and her two Japanese children. Why Japanese? Because our Chinese friend is married to a Japanese. All people here are married to Japanese. They have, Jap they have Japanese children. And myself. That's my name before I naturalized, Dave Aldwinkle, which comes out as Adodowinkuru Devito. Adodowinkuru got shortened down to Adodo, and I put kanji to fit it. Aha, ha. The plot <laughs> thing is, it's like, everybody's like, how'd that happen? Well, that's how. Adodowinkuru becomes Adodo, and then, and Devito, hey, I've had Devito for my kanji since I first came to Japan, which is in 1986. For some people, that was before you were even born, right? <laughs> <laughs> then I was an American. I, was, I had permanent residency, and I had, a, I had a Japanese wife, I still have two children. And there are also other Japanese friends, witnesses, and a Hokkaido Shimbun reporter came along with us, because we actually put out a, 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 an all-points bulletin message in English and in Japanese to several mailing lists saying, we want to go and find out what's going on here, we want to also take a bath, would anybody want to come with us? And 17 people came. Now, what happened when we went there? Well, everyone was permitted entry except the non-Asians. Olaf, my German friend, Morgan, my American friend, and myself, I was said I could not come in. The interesting thing was the Chinese friend of ours was let in with their children. Said okay, they didn't. They didn't know she was Japanese. She was They didn't know that she was Chine, uh, Chinese. <laughs> so, let's say for example, you're out there right now. You're at the onset. You're in the 17 people. You have this situation. They say only the white people cannot come in. What do you say? What would you say? Go on. Why? <laughs> That's so concise. <laughs> Why? Okay, let's get another funnier comment over there. Go on then, give it to everyone. Go on, go on. We had a good laugh over there. Let's hear it. Go ahead, go ahead. Go on, you give it to me. They won't give it to us. It's like that with students. They always laugh and then they won't tell you what's wrong. It's like, you know, when your zipper's undone, they won't tell you. That. You know, don't you hit it when that happens? All the students are laughing and you don't know why. It's like very unnerving. They won't tell us. Anyway, you say why. Why this and why not that? Any other questions? Okay. We asked why <laughs> refuse foreigners. Now I put foreigners in quotes there because there's an issue here. You know, they, this is, well look, this is one of the reasons they gave us. They talked about Russian sailors. All right, then Russian sailors, they said. Now why Russian sailors? Okay, how many people are Otara Shushin in this room? Otara Shushin. One? Only one? My goodness, you get a very, you get people from all over the country, one person. Okay, have you seen Russian sailors in Otara? Yes. Okay, lots of them? Three. A lot of them? Many Russian sailors? A few, a few people or many people? A few. Only a few? Okay, back in 1999, there were a lot. There were about 15,000 per year that came to Otara. Why? Well, because at that, at that time, there were a lot, there was a lot of crab out there, and they would catch the crab, they'd bring the crab to sell in Otadr, and, and those Russians would, would buy cars, used electronics, televisions. It was great to go to the, to the port 
you'd see them loading this big car onto the boat, maybe three or four cars, and the boat would be tipping. And I'd think, how did they ever get that back home? They did. So there was a big trade happening then. So there were sailors coming to Otter, and they were, they were selling, and they were buying. Everyone was making money. But during the evening hours, the Russian sailors would go to the bath. And according to Yunahana, Russian sailors foul the bath water with soap, laundry, and excreta. Excreta meaning shit. <laughs> and for those people that, don't, that, that don't, don't like euphemisms, yeah, they said that the Russian sailors would not rinse off the soap when they got into the tub. They said that they would do their laundry in the, tub, in, the, in the tub. And they said that they would pee and poo in the tub. <laughs> That's what they said. I'm just, I'm just the messenger here. Okay. They also said that Russian sailors carrying vodka bottles get drunk and disturb the police. They said that the Russians would like come in and drink and they would make a big, they make lots of noise. I'm sorry, I'm moving around too much. Sure, okay, sure. I, I tend to move around too much. Sorry. They said that if Russian sailors came in. Japanese customers would be bothered by Russians because they did not, uh, because they would drink and get drunk. They also said that Russian sailors are scary and smell bad. In the, in the, in the original Japanese, Roski wana, Roski wana, Konakte, Kibakakte, Ksaido. Ksaido. It's like, you know, they, they wouldn't use, they'd call them Roski. They still do, don't they? Good old Roski. Right, and, uh, they said that um, Russian sailors also carry lice and disease. Lice as in kejidami and disease. They said that Russian sailors would, if they, if they let in Russian sailors, they would have some sort of disease. And I said, well, 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 well like what kind of disease? And they said, well, they talked about uh, skin conditions, hifubyo. Okay, and did you have a, um, what, wait, 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 um, where? Where did this happen? Well, we don't have, we heard it as a rumor. We heard rumors that they, they do that. Wait, 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 you don't have any experience? You have a doctor's certificate saying you have a health problem? No, we can't do that. Because if we tell the public that we have a health problem, then we close and all the customers stay away. Yeah. But did that happen? Well, it happened somewhere. We heard that it happened at some other onset. Okay, but, 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 but it hasn't happened to you yet. Yeah, but if it happens, you see, then you start getting paranoid. Okay. In sum, they said that Japanese customers would stay away if Russian sailors are present. Your screen went down again. Okay. That's okay like it, it will keep going. Okay, we'll keep going. Good. Japanese customers will stay away if Russian sailors are present. So in other words, they talked about shkatsumonai in the Japanese. In other words, a life or death situation. If they if you let in Russians, then you know, we'd go bankrupt was their logic. Okay, now you're there now. Again, you're back in the 17 people, and you're hearing this. What do you say? Do you have a question? I am not Russian. Yeah. <laughs> Stereo. <laughs> I'm not Russian, right. Anything else? I pay money. <laughs> <laughs> Russians pay money too, they'll say. <laughs> I promise not to poop into the pool. I promise not to poop, okay. I promise. <laughs> Anything else? I only drink beer, no vodka. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, some of the onsens, of course, even serve beer. Some of my favorite onsens you can drink there, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's great fun to drink in an onsen. Love onsens. One of the best things about Japan. Okay, anything else? Okay, we're opening up. Thank you. Keep, talk keep talking to me. I like that. Now, this, this information is from interviews with not only Yunohana, but also Ospa, which is down by Otarachiko, and Panorama. Panorama is another. It's the ferry, the ferry terminal. There is a there, there's a tem, there's temple dai, it's like temple dai onsen. You know, um, panorama. You can actually go into there and get a nice view of the of the ocean while you're taking a bath. Um, all of them nice places. I think I've never gone into Yunnan. <laughs> but we asked them, okay, why did you refuse us? As you said, I'm not Russian, right? <laughs> <laughs> We're not Russian sailors. We are residents of Japan with families. You know, you're applying the Hokkaido information 